14 WILI and 95.3 FM presents Hometown Threads, a closer look at our community and the people that make it go. Every week, you'll hear uplifting stories from our local businesses and our neighbors. Now, here's our host for Hometown Threads, Keith C. Rice. Welcome into episode 63 of Hometown Threads on 14 WILI and 95.3 FM. Willimantic Today Facebook. Uh, let's see, we got uh, Spectrum 192, the WILI Radio YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel, WILI Radio, not just WILI. And if you uh, you can watch all the shows, not just Hometown Threads, but uh, you can watch all the uh, all the 5 o'clock shows. Uh, big thanks to our producer, J. Matt Rupar, uh, as uh, Ernie Eldridge likes to say, work on the dials. <laughs> I'm Keith C. Rice, and of course, Hometown Threads comes your way every week, courtesy of our friends at Liberty Bank Beat Community Kime at three great local locations right across the street from the radio station, of course, and Science Plus. Uh, 679 Main Street, Willimantic. Uh, West Main Street, Willimantic. Gateway Commons, managed by my beautiful wife, Marianne Gargoni. And of course, Route 195 in Mansfield. Uh, Liberty Bank Beat Community Kime. J. Matt Rupar, if you wouldn't mind. Say hello to the fine folks. Hello. Here we go, episode 63, and of course, you can always go to WILI.com if you'd rather listen to the episode. Uh, the podcast is actually sponsored by our friends at Triple E Pro Clean Services. So here we go, let's welcome in our guests for episode 63. That's right, I said guests, plural. We have Joe and Andre Duval who made the, the long trip. How many steps over is it from Science Plus to the radio station? Uh, next door, it's quite a ways. Quite a ways. How many, it's got to be about, what, 10 steps, probably? Uh, at least... And like I said earlier, I do want to get paid for travel time. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll throw some money your way. But it's great to have both of you here. Uh, we had to reschedule because these guys are so busy. Science Plus, of course, right right next door to the radio station here. So if we're 720, you guys are... 700. 700. 700 Main Street, Willimantic. And, of course, we'll, uh, that building used to be the broadcaster. Now, this is where you guys will correct me because it was... Was it something before the broadcaster... And did it go broadcaster, Science Plus, or what was it before the broadcaster? It was an empty lot. Just an empty lot. Yeah, yeah. Redevelopment came in in, uh, what, the 70s, early 70s, probably. And uh, they this was an empty lot, too, where you guys are located. They, oh, okay. I think Pat Cruz right? said that one. Yeah. yeah. So we put up our building in 1984, and uh, at that time, this was a, a park type thing. Really? It had been landscaped and very nicely done. And uh, when you when you guys, when this building was put up, needless to say, uh, everything disappeared because there was no room left, really. The building, the footprint of the building is, is quite large. Yeah. And uh, that was pretty much the end of it. Uh, I know my daughter uh, got some flowers and all the plantings that she salvaged from here, as well as some uh, paving stones, because nobody, you know, back then it was like, no, no, they're just going to bury it. So. so the radio station goes up in, I always forget, it's 87, 88, 88, right? I should know this. I think the building's it's 87. 87 went up, uh, yeah. 88 went on, I think. That's something like that, yeah. So when did the broadcaster uh, enter the picture here? 87. Oh, so, so same year, okay. No, it wasn't the same year. I mean, six. Oh, so you guys were a year before us. No, if you go look in the, in the paving stones, it's 1987. Or was it 84? No, I'm sorry. But either 80, way, you were... 84, 84. 84 here, yeah, so see, you were before the, us. The, the mind is gone here. Oh, I hear you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, the broadcaster arrives in 84. Yep. And you, now, did you guys, uh, what did the Duvals, did you always do the broadcaster, or, or did the Duvals uh, do something before the broadcaster? Tell us a little about uh, the history with the Duvals here in Willimantic. Okay, I moved here, I was six years old. Let's go back that far, yeah, go In ahead. 1949. Okay, so you moved here in 49. From Canada. Oh. With my parents, of course, because I was uh, too young to travel alone, six <laughs> years old. <laughs> yeah, it's a little tad young. Yeah, and uh, uh, I went to school here with the tech and graduated with a uh, mechanical drawing certificate. And... Back then, there really wasn't anything, any work in the area, in the, locally or even in Hartford for that matter. And uh, I ended up moving, or actually I joined the Army first, okay. the U.S. Army, and spent uh, three years doing that. Uh, 
and uh, after that, uh, got married, moved back to Montreal because I had two uncles. You moved back to Montreal. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, and we had. I had two uncles uh, that lived in Montreal, and, and uh, talking to them, I said, "Oh, there's plenty of jobs around here." So we moved to Montreal, and uh, I got a job in the city itself, uh, working for household finance, making out loans and. Collections and that type of. And how old are you at this point? I was I was twenty two if okay. I remember correctly. And uh, after that, um, I had it was on salary and, and back then my salary was two hundred and twenty five dollars a month. Wow! <laughs> but that was <laughs> yeah. And my after, time changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After a month or two, I got a, a promotion and I was making thirty dollars more. So I was up to 300 and... Congrats uh, on the race. Yes. Yeah. And then I had another uncle who lived in Quebec City. Okay. And he said, you know, uh, General Motors Acceptance is looking for some help. Really? He says, uh, and, and my uncle was in the automotive business. He was the controller of uh, one of the bigger dealers in Quebec City. So he was very friendly with the manager. They used to go out drinking once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, I, I went to Quebec City f and the manager actually went to work on Saturday, interviewed me, gave me all the tests, and uh, I ended up getting a job. At that time I was making 300. This job was for 400 a month. Look, okay. And a company car. Can't say no to that. I couldn't say no to that. And uh, so my my wife went shopping with my sister who lives who live actually she still lives up there in Quebec City and uh, she went shopping for a rent which we found or she found I should say and this was a, a, a three-story building two rents on main le main level second and third floor and it was brand new still a little bit of sawdust on the floor and the rent including utilities etc was ninety dollars a month couldn't beat that either. Wow. <laughs> so that was the extent of that. So we we lived there for about nine years. And then, uh, well, we not at that particular location because okay. we ended up buying a house. In that area. And then what and, got you here? Uh, what got me here, uh, my employer, General Motors, when, when I was in Quebec City, they promised me that, or I asked them, or should I say, that uh, we were thinking of buying a house. And uh, is there any chance I'm going to be transferred? Oh, no, no, no problem with that. You won't be transferred. Six months later, they transferred me. Oh, my to, goodness. To a, a, call, a town called uh, Riviere du Loup, which is Wolf's River in English, which is 150 miles northeast of Quebec City. Okay. Basically, we called that maybe the boondocks. It was okay because the office wasn't there. I lived there, but I, I was key pointed there. The office was another 70 miles further down. Oh, my God. Or further up, I should say. But that was my territory. Uh, that section of Quebec, part of New Brunswick, and northern Maine. And basically, I went to the office once a year for the Christmas party, and that was it. And then I got kind of tired of that after X number of months. And my in-laws, the Schulteis, Marion and Edward Schulteis, owned the broadcaster. And, of course, they were my in-laws. And uh, they wanted their daughter and kids, grandkids, a little bit closer. And they said, well, you know, you guys should come over here and blah, blah, blah. Well, they had been trying for years to do that. <laughs> so finally I said uh, to my wife, I said, why don't, why don't we do that? So we moved back to Connecticut. Now, was Andre born yet? we got to bring... Uh, yep, I was about five. I, five or six when we moved back. Okay, so Andre's about five or six. Do you remember any of this, too? The move back in Canada and Connecticut? I remember very little growing up in Canada. I, really? It was, French was my first language. I was about Actually, to ask. You guys taught French? My my grandmother would visit, and I she would get upset because I couldn't speak to her because I only spoke French. Really? Back before we wow. moved Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you vaguely remember the move back. So now he's about five or six. What year would you say this is, Joe? 72. 73. 73. Well, I was one nope. year old. November 73. Okay, so you moved back. 
Yep. Uh, your in-laws are running the broadcaster. Right. Your uh, what is your role at the broadcaster? Sales. Sales. Right. Okay, so you're doing sales. Uh, now back then, same with like WILI, you guys. Um, I, how big was the staff there? What did the tell us a little for people who may not remember the broadcaster? I remember the broadcaster. Explain what that newspaper slash magazine was, sort of. All right. Uh, <clears throat> it was a uh, half size of a, a newspaper actually. Right. Actually, at the time. And uh, we were located in Coventry. That's why it was originally, well, it still it was. The Coventry Broadcaster, Inc. was the legal name. Ah. And it was located uh, in Coventry in the building underneath the post office where there's a Chinese restaurant now. Okay. And uh, we were there for a number of years. We had half the building, half the bottom floor, I should say, not the building, and eventually we ended up taking over the entire bottom floor. And at that time we had, uh, I don't know, counting, well, there was my in-laws. My wife was working there. I was working there. And uh, one other person. Okay. And that was before you moved to this location, correct? Yes. Yeah. And you moved here in 84. No, before on the 31 Main Street. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that was the original location. Yeah. No, right. in Willowmantic. In Willowmantic, yeah. yes, in Willowmantic. Yeah. Right across from the uh, uh, Cumberland Farms. Was the broadcast, oh, the broadcaster was always owned by your in-laws? Yeah. Okay. My mother-in-law and two other women started it. Yeah, how did it start? With a mimeograph press on the back porch of wherever one of them was living. In really? Country. Yeah. And it was just a mimeograph sheet. It started out one page. Wow. And then it became two pages. It became pretty thick there for a while. I remember it. Well, yeah. Yeah, we used to About run... 10, what, 10, 12 pages long, right? Yeah. Was it? Was, am I right on that? Or was it you're, you're, you're close. The, the most we ever had was 130 pages. Oh, well, my bad. I don't know. Where was I thinking? I'm thinking of something else. Well, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, it was pretty... We had three sections. We had the regular section. Oh, that's right. We had the auto section and a real estate section. I right, remember, this was, uh, this goes way back. So yeah. what... Uh, Okay, and was it weekly again? See, I'm yeah, it was a weekly. weekly. Okay, and there was no news in it. It was strictly advertising. All advertisements. Yeah, from uh, the businesses and Name all some of the businesses that were. Oh, if, if you could run, I mean, to put you guys on the spot, Andre, you could chime in if you want. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> one that I can remember very easily is uh, one of your advertisers, Landon Tire. Landon Tire. Thank You're... you for not saying Landon's <laughs> Tire, by the way. Sure. <laughs> I hear people so <laughs> Landon Tire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, we had uh, Gothier Tire. Gothier. I remember the Gothier Tire. He, yeah. yeah. Stripling Motor. Stripling. Good uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Larry Stripling. Oh, yeah. Gem Chevrolet. Gem Chevy. Gem Chevy. What was and the one in, in Norwich? The, the car dealer in Norwich. Mm. On Dame Street. Can't think of that. Can't think. But uh, we had, <laughs> needless to say, we had all the car dealers. Okay. Wow. We had... All the real estate agents and companies. That's why we were able to do you know, 30 or 40 pages of auto advertising and 30 or 40 pages of real estate wow. advertising. Wow. That, That's that, awesome. All advertisements. All advertisements. That is, now, what year did the broadcaster and, and uh, what year did it come to an end and how did that all go down? And then what did you guys go right into Science Plus? Tell us about that transition. All right. Um, I'm trying to remember what year it was. When we we close anyway, I'm sorry. Before you get into that, Andre has, has he been involved? What is Andre's role at Science Plus right now? And were you involved the broadcast? The broadcast? Too? I started working at the broadcaster probably illegally at 13. Oh really? Uh, oh well, kind of like me. Did you start? Yeah. <laughs> and, work, and, and work I use very loosely. I didn't do too much work, right, right. but I would answer phones and help out or Good. whatever, stock the soda machine, things like that, sweep the floors. Yeah, yeah. Um, my mother actually had an offshoot of uh, inkwell printers for a little while, and okay. I ran the AB Dick 360 printing press for a little while. So, I so you were involved with the broadcaster as well, okay? Because you were probably growing up at that time. How old are you, if you don't? I'm 55. Yeah, you and I are on the same age. I just turned 52. So yeah, Andre and yeah. I know what it's like to grow up in a family business. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so you uh, spent a good number of years getting involved with the broadcaster, and then we'll get into the transition of Science Plus and all that. Yeah. Yep. If you, uh, it's around. You don't have to give us a year, but roughly. It was uh, while I was at, uh, I should have looked it up, thinking I was coming here. Anyway, it had to be. Actually, it's twenty-five years ago. 
What's what is this? Two thousand twenty-four. So it was so it was around two thousand ninety-nine. Okay. Like that. All right, well, that's good, and that's good. So, close enough. How, like, oh, the broadcasts were doing so well for years. Like, what happened? Just well, what happened was there was like a, a recession or yeah. depression <laughs> or whatever, and uh, we ended up losing the majority of the businesses that were in town. Just went under. Yeah. I mean, we carried them as long as we could, but you know, they just ended up that. The, the, they went under, therefore they weren't advertising, therefore our revenues were cut down. And during that period, we maintained our entire staff, even though we should have. Really? Yeah, wow. We probably, we. <laughs> and by then we had, what, 20 something in house? And how many yeah. delivery? 100 and something drivers? Yeah, delivery people. So you still have pretty really decent staff there? Yeah, well, we kept them going, thinking it's going to get better, it's going to get better. And it reached the point where, well, it was we did the layouts, camera ready stuff, and it would go up to the Rockville Reminder, okay. and they would do our printing. And needless to say, when things started to go south, uh, we weren't able to pay them on the, <laughs> yeah. the way they wanted, and uh, we ended up owing the Reminder one hundred sixty-four thousand wow. dollars, which back then was pretty good money, yeah. and. Uh, we had a meeting and, and they decided that, or we decided that uh, the thing to do was, they, they had been trying to buy us for years. Oh, really? Yeah, and we should have sold it previously. Uh, I remember oh, maybe 10, 15 years before that, we had an offer, not from, from, the, Chronic, from the Chronicle or, or from the Reminder, but from uh, another outfit that owned a whole bunch of Weekly papers. So you were getting offers and you know, really. Yeah. How long were you guys shopping for before you said? Because you know, I went through kind of what Andre went through a family business going through a sale. Yeah. So how long would you say roughly? Yeah, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. You know that you were shopping around until you finally found. Okay, let's go. With, you know. You mean to sell it? Yeah, to sell it. So you, how long did it take you to find a buyer, a good buyer? We, we, <laughs> we had that one meeting at the reminder. Oh, that, that was it. Oh, I thought you guys had uh, maybe oh, fielding no, offers no, or something. No, no, no. Okay. We, what I'm saying, what I was saying is we, we did receive offers, you know, no. chain outfits, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And it was always, no, because hey, we were making good money at the time, and uh, it was going to last forever. Yeah. Well, uh, the one I remember the most was a, I can't remember the, the person's name, but he had weekly papers, mostly on Long Island, and he had like 400 and some odd papers in Long Island. And we were offered six million dollars, which we should have taken. <laughs> yeah. How much again? Six million dollars. Oh my God! I didn't know about that. You didn't know. Andre no. didn't know about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is this like breaking news yeah. for you, Andre? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that offer. So wait, why? Why didn't you take that again? Because times were good. were good. I mean, six million dollars. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, <laughs> no, I know. I know. You I, know how it is. No, I, I, that's. Um, so I got to ask, uh, we're, we're with Joe and Andre Duval from, I almost said the broadcaster, Signs Plus, here yeah. on Hometown Threads, episode 63 on WILI, uh, 1400 AM, 95.3 FM, Willimantic Today, Facebook, uh, brought to you by Liberty Bank, Be Community Kind. I want to ask Andre, kind of like me, around the same age, growing up in a family business, the day the sale went through, because I could still remember, it was kind of like a day like today for me, I'll never forget driving around going, oh my God, we just sold the radio station. What was that like for you, Andre? <clears throat> Um, not really sure I remember specifically. I'm not sure if I was fully involved at the, at no, the office at the I time. Think you were working at the casino. No, oh, so I, I was no? probably bartending by then. Oh, yeah. oh, so he would just step away for a while and then come back? Is that how, or? I, <laughs> yeah, because I went into bartending when I turned 18. And uh, yeah, I was pretty much out by then. And that's about the same time that it got sold, too. So I think it just worked Okay, so out he was way. around probably around when the, when the sale took yeah, place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, he wasn't in involved. Invo involved, yeah. Well, I remember we had a, a meeting, a family meeting. It was... My parents were like, we're, we're getting ready to... We're thinking about selling the place. Do you guys have any interest in keep running, keeping it running? And we went and we looked at the numbers and everything. And we realized that it really wasn't going to no. maintain itself. So we decided to... Now, either Joe or Andre, tell us about um, um, the interim. The, well, the interim, and also how you came up with the name Science Plus. To start with the interim. 
the intro. My intro, I was bartending. Oh, yeah, where, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, where are you bartending? Homestead restaurant. Oh, homestead. I remember still homestead. Still the yeah. best prime rib I've ever had. In my life. <laughs> little plug. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> um, and then I bartended a few different bars in town. Lucky's. Sure. Um, yeah. Main Street Cafe for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then when the casino was getting ready to open, I went down there as a dealer. Nice. Okay, yeah. so you were you were out of the business there for a while. Yeah. Okay. What uh, before we get into whole science plus, what brought you back? Uh, what made you leave bartending and stuff? Well, I left bartending to go work as a dealer at the casino. Well, yeah. What made you? Yeah. After sixteen years and moving up the ladder, uh, in the casino's infinite wisdom, they decided to read uh, to um, negate my position. Oh, uh, I, 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 I was a full pit boss. <laughs> I swear to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, they so, got rid of most of the pit bosses. They got rid of the all the pit time. bosses. But, uh, yeah, so then I ended up... Uh, Helping Dad I out. took my eight months of severance pay. Oh, there you go. Uh -huh. I went and uh, uh, managed a subway in Norwich for about a year. Oh. And then after I was got fed up enough with not pe people not showing up oh. to work, yeah, that's all I story. called him up. I said, do what you got to do. I'm coming to work for you. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's great. All right, now we have a few minutes left, but tell us how Science Plus became Science Plus. Okay. You'd have to talk to Kurt Lessinger about that because he's the one that started Science Plus. Oh, yeah. can we get Kurt point? on the phone? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and originally it was in North Windham, and then they moved to uh, Brooks, Bend Plaza. Brooks Bend Plaza. Oh, okay. And that's where it was located when I bought it. And basically, uh, I had an empty building that we own and uh, couldn't find any <coughs> tenants at the time. Plus, uh, <coughs> The sign business is graphic arts, a lot of graphic arts, which we were involved in. So it was a, a basically good, a good segue. It, yeah, it, it was. Fit. It was. It was a no-brainer, okay. really. And Kurt, who had medical issues, uh, wanted to sell. So we negotiated a little bit, and we ended up buying it. Joe Calvo who owns that building of uh, the Brooks Bed Plaza. Uh, he, they were just on a month to month down there, and so it was no big deal for, for us to move it to the location it is now, next door to you guys. Well, it's great being neighbors with you guys. Tell us a little more about what Science Plus does, for those who are unaware of exactly what Science Plus is Science Plus is and all about. Well, we do, Joe, Andre. Well, we do all types of signage, uh, you know, lawn signs, electric signs, lit boxes, uh, magnetics, vehicle lettering, uh, anything to do with signs, if we can't do it, I mean, because uh, some of the stuff you can't do, you have to send it out to one of your suppliers, or and and they will fabricate it, and then we would do the install and all that type of thing. Okay. Um, need a sign? Go see these guys, Joe, Andre Duval. Uh, real quick, both of you, are there anyone you'd like to thank or say hello to throughout this journey of broadcasters, broadcaster and Science Plus? Before we wrap this up, anybody you'd like to thank or say hello to? Well, I'd like to say hello and thank you to my in-laws, needless to say, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. And actually, I would probably have retired a long time ago working for General Motors. <laughs> and I'd still be in Canada. I was um, going to say, do you guys would ever want to go back to Canada at some point? I've considered it. Um, I think logistically, it would be just a, a real difficult thing to, because I'm married to a 13-year-old. And uh, What about the tie-in with, with the casino? Oh, that's true. My yeah, Mohegan Sun. My wife still works at Mohegan, okay. and they are the managing partner at the Niagara Casino, one of the Niagara casinos. So, so technically, if we wanted to, I could potentially get her to get transferred, and I could get a job there. There you go. You but it. I'm content where I'm at right now. Anyone you want to thank or say hello to? Um, I don't, just uh, everybody, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I've I I can definitely say I've had a pretty easy life all in all, because of everything that my parents have done and and just the upbringing I've had. So. We're very lucky to grow up in a family business, and I love yeah. having family. I've had, right, Matt, a lot of family. I know we're running a little over here. I've had a lot of family businesses on Hometown Threads, and mm -hmm. here's another one right now, the Duvals. Andre Duval, Joe Duval, Signs Plus, 700 Main Street, Willimantic. Right next door to us, and uh, well, we were just talking about the footbridge. That's a whole other story. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll <laughs> be careful of that footbridge. <laughs> Episode 63 of the books. Thank you to Liberty Bank, Be Community Kind. Thank you to Triple E Pro Clean Services. They sponsor the podcast. Liberty Bank sponsors the show. Uh, thank you to J. Matt Rupar, Willamantic Today. 
And that'll do it for episode 63. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And in the words of the great Roddy McCumber. Bye for now, folks. Bye for now. And that concludes another edition of Hometown Threads. Got a story for Keith? Reach out to him on Facebook by searching Keith C. Rice or email him at krice at hallradio.net. Don't forget to tune in next week on 14 WILI and 95.3 FM, as well as the Willimantic Today page on Facebook.